What is up, boyos? Ah, uh, boyos? And welcome to Last Week in Games, where everything is video games. My name is Jake, and again, I'm joined by nobody. This is probably the new normal. You know, we'll have hosts in every once in a while, but it'll probably just be mostly me um, for the time being. It'd be great to get another host, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, but thank you for joining us. Uh, we've got a few big pieces of news. We don't have a lot of news today, but we do have a few big pieces of news that I am excited to talk about. So let's just jump into it. We're going to start with the t what we lovingly call here at Last Week in Games, the titties. These are some tidbits of news that we think are worth mentioning. First titty, Charles Martinet, the original voice of Mario. He's been the voice of Mario for since the beginning. He is stepping down as Mario. Makes sense. He's an older guy. Uh, and this, this news comes right before the release of Super Mario Wonder. And it was also announced that he was not the voice of Mario in that game. This does come right after the Super Mario Bros. movie where he does play a big part in that movie. So, much respect to Charles Martinet. They did announce that he is going to be a Mario ambassador. Not quite sure what that means. I guess he'll just go out and do press junkets for Nintendo. I guess that's his full-time job now. Uh, so, that's cool i guess so charles martinet stepping down as mario he will be missed people are acting like he's dead he's not dead and it's very possible that they may bring him back again to do something in the future but for now he is stepping down second titty here is we got the announcement earlier this year of the playstation q i think is what it was called during the summer showcases well we just got more information about it um and the, inter the internet is on fire about it. So first of all, it is now called the PlayStation Portal. And it does pretty much exactly what they said it was going to do at that uh, PlayStation event. Which is why not a lot of people were talking about it to begin with. Basically, it is just a way to play your PS5 uh, remotely. Um, so you stream the hardware of your PS5 to this device. So this is what it looks like. We're looking at thegamer.com here, but uh, it's basically a tablet with a DualSense controller connected to the ends of it. Um, but the thing about it is it doesn't really have any power uh, that you would expect from a tablet. It doesn't have any power at all. Uh, it literally is just used to stream your PS5 uh, remotely. So it shoots off what you're playing from your PS5 onto the internet and then connects to this device remotely, basically. I don't see the appeal of it. And that's kind of what the internet is. That is the consensus online. Uh, everyone is sort of like, Sony, why are you doing this? This seems useless. First of all, remote play has never been good. I know it's better than it's ever been, but it's never been good. We have things like the Steam Deck that have proven that handheld consoles are still wanted. So for Sony to not do a handheld console, probably because they're scared after what happened with the Vita, which was a colossal failure. They're just sort of releasing this thing. So a few more details about uh, this device. It costs $199. Um... And there was another piece of news that came along with this, that this device, you cannot connect Bluetooth headphones to it. You can only connect the PlayStation branded headphones. So the new over the ear headphones or the new earbuds. And just to put that into perspective, the over the ear headphones cost $150 and the earbuds cost $200. That's crazy because Every device known to man at this point has Bluetooth capabilities. That is an absolutely atrocious thing that they did with this. Um, it does have a headphone jack, 
So you can plug your headphones into it if you have that. But most people these days don't even have wired headphones anymore. And a lot of people have already spent a lot of money for really nice Bluetooth headphones. And they're not going to buy more Bluetooth headphones, especially for this like quote unquote affordable $200 handheld console. I say quote unquote handheld console because you can't even take this thing on the go with you. You can really just play it in your house. And my thought process on why they decided to release this thing is in Japan, it is known that uh, people, a lot of people have like smaller homes and less TVs there. So, you know, if your wife and kids are playing on the TV, you can still play your PS5 on this device. And in that context, I get it. It makes sense. But in America, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Uh, because uh, we just buy more and more TVs. We throw a TV in the fridge if we need to. You know, that's just how it is here in America for a lot of people. I am not saying that this won't appeal to somebody. I am sure that this will appeal to somebody. That somebody is not me. Now it is a lot of people are complaining about the price point. They're saying it's very expensive, but I will say the DualSense Edge, which is the pro controller, is the same price. So when you think of it as just like another controller, this is like a pro controller and it has a screen and the controllers on this thing do have like the haptics and all of that stuff. It's, it is pretty affordable. It's cheaper than a Nintendo switch. It's a lot cheaper than a steam deck. So in that regard, I, I understand that being said, you can buy controllers that hook up to your TV or tablets and you could do exactly that with your current phone or tablet i think i said tv a second ago i meant phone or tablet so you can already do this with your current phone or if you own like a shitty samsung tablet you can already do this with that now i've heard the screen is nice on this thing cool that's great um it would just be nice if they released some sort of skew of this that actually had some sort of nat native capabilities now here's the kicker on top of all of this you can stream from your PlayStation, but you cannot use the PlayStation streaming services that you get with your PS Plus subscription. So you cannot actually stream games. You can stream games from your PlayStation, but you cannot use PlayStation streaming, which is too bad because I've been messing around with PlayStation streaming a little bit and it works surprisingly well. Um, so the fact that that's not a feature on this thing, the fact that you can't connect Bluetooth speakers to this thing, I don't know why you wouldn't just buy some sort of connector that connects your, uh, your DualSense controller to like a, you know, a, a $60 tablet, because that's really all you need to do. Uh, this thing seems useless. Now, all that being said, there's been a lot of heat on the internet versus this thing. Um, understandably so. But I will say this, this is not a console release for PlayStation. This is an accessory that PlayStation is using, much like a controller or any other kind of add-on. This is not like them releasing the PSVR 2 earlier this year. This is more of them releasing the DualSense Edge last year. It's more in that realm. Um, so when you look at it like that, You'll see this on the shelf of Walmarts forever and ever. No one's going to buy this thing. Maybe a couple people will. It'll go on sale in a few years and maybe in a few years when it's dirt cheap, it might be worth picking up. But at its current point, I don't see the point. But also the heat online, I think, is a little overblown. So that was the news with the PlayStation Portal. That was the big thing that happened this week with the PlayStation Portal. But there was another big thing that happened last week and that big thing has to do with my boy jeffrey Keeley. 
the man himself, he's back with a vengeance. The man who puts on the Game Awards. The man who does the Summer Game Fest. The man who is the host of Key 3 Live every year. Well, he's back with a vengeance, and he does this every year. He teams up with Gamescom, which is a huge convention slash expo that happens in Germany every year. He teams up with them every year to do a thing called Opening Night Live. And it's like the opening night of Gamescom. And I have to say, I thought it was okay. I only think it's okay, though, because Jeff came out weeks in advance saying, if you're expecting, like, big game reveals or, like, anything huge like that, you know, like a Last of Us Factions or a new IP from Xbox or anything huge like that, he he let us know a week, weeks ago we're not getting that at gamescom gamescom is just for updates of games that we already know about so with that context in mind i thought it was a pretty good showcase it was long it was like two hours long it could have been cut down like a half an hour that being said i i thought the updates that we got were pretty interesting updates some of I could have lived my whole life without knowing some of them, but that's just how these Keeley events go. But I almost feel like he does this Gamescom event just to appease the developers. Like, hey, we'll give updates to your game as long as you give us the big exclusive at the Game Awards. So I, I, I think that's kind of what Opening Night Live is at this point. And, and I think that's fine. There were a couple interesting things that happened at the top. Uh, first of all, I want to mention the fact that someone did, uh, just run on, rush the stage, sort of like what happened at the game awards. Uh, they tried doing the Bill Clinton thing again. It was so lame. Jeff Keighley handled it like a pro Jeff. You really got to get better security. He's going to need like the hell's angels at the, at the game awards this year, because I guarantee someone will try to go on stage again at the game awards. So Hopefully that that stops happening, um, but yeah. Uh, another thing that happened that was sort of not games related, Zack Snyder came out and showed a trailer for his new movie Rebel Moon, which I can just only summarize as Star Wars meets Chronicles of Narnia. It looks okay. I'm not a huge Zack Snyder fan. Um, but I also don't hate all of his work, um, but not a huge fan. But I, I'm i down to see Zack Snyder do his own IP, though. And uh, I think that's interesting. And the reason I said it's only sort of game related, because he did announce that they are working on a game for Rebel Moon that is exclusive to Netflix. So that's interesting, but also makes me less interested because I can't imagine it'll be very good. If it's just on Netflix, let's run down a few things that we saw at Gamescom. Uh, not th this is not in order. I'm going to skip some things that I think aren't very interesting. If you want to watch the whole thing, you certainly can go do that. But these are a few things that I thought uh, were interesting and that I would kind of want to talk about. Uh, there was a live action Starfield trailer that I thought was pretty good. And uh, the closer we get to Starfield, the more I'm like, yeah, I'm kind of down for a new Bethesda game. And I'm kind of down for a new Bethesda IP. I, I think it's I think it's going to be great. I, I, I'm, I'm excited about it. Could be bad, but I think it's going to be exciting. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. We did get some like leaks the week before last uh, about like the minimap being back and the fact that there's going to be zombies and stuff and the fact that we're going to have the the original Modern Warfare 2 maps in Modern Warfare 3. So that stuff sort of leaked. We got like a huge story trailer slash gameplay trailer that went on a little too long, but it was cool. Um, that was probably like the big get for Keeley at this event as far as, you know, like big IPs, but also something that we expected. Um, it, it It's interesting that Activision waited this long to announce the game. Uh, considering it comes out in October, I believe. So, yeah. Mortal Kombat 1 was there, and we got to see some uh, final kills 
that were just absolutely gruesome and to be expected from Mortal Kombat, and that Mortal Kombat 1 game is looking pretty, pretty good. Tekken 8 re received a uh, it received a release date, and that release date is January 26th, 2024, which is my birthday. So how about that? Um, I've always liked Tekken. Maybe I'll pick this one up. Probably not. Um, Assassin's Creed Mirage got a trailer. Um, so that's cool. I feel like we've seen this game about a billion times. It comes out in like a month or two. So Assassin's Creed Mirage is coming out. We got a really, really cool trailer for Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty. I This trailer actually made me want to jump into Cyberpunk and give it another shot. Uh, when the game came out, I didn't have the beefiest PC. Uh, I had a PS4 and I played it on PS4 and it didn't run very well. Now... I have a beefy PC, so I, I should give it another shot. I really should give it another shot. Um, yeah. Uh, Sonic Super... S Sonic Superstars. Uh, Sonic Superstars... Stars. Oh, my God. Sonic Superstars gets a release date of October 17th. So, I, I, I think this game looks really awesome. So, I'm excited about it. And Sonic Frontiers gets a trailer for the final horizon update. Um, I did not realize that uh, Sonic Frontiers was getting updates like this, but there you go. Um, there was a new narrative game called Dustborn, uh, which, I don't know, these trailers are always interesting to me. Um, it's sort of like cell shaded storybook sort of things. But you never know, like, is there actually going to be some sort of weird gameplay in it? Or is it just a storybook thing? It's always hard to tell with these trailers, and I wish they were a bit more transparent. Um, but I know with these smaller, like, indie games, uh, they don't even really know what the game's going to look like until the game is out. You know what I mean? Like, they're constantly making changes. And I, I think that's why a lot of these, like, indie games have very subtle trailers like this. Uh, we've got a new game coming from the creators of the untitled goose game called thank goodness you're home which looks like uh like a little cutesy puzzle in the art style kind of looks like warioware almost so yeah it, it looks like warioware meets uh the pathless <laughs> um little nightmares 3 got a trailer uh so that was exciting i think that game looks really cool um super into it Supermassive is always putting out great work, so that's another one to look out for. Uh, Wukong, uh, Black Myth Wukong uh, got a trailer. This is sort of like a, a Souls-like game, um, I, but I've seen a lot of the Souls community be like, uh, this game looks weird. Like uh, It looks like maybe it won't be a very good Souls-like, um, but I, I think it looks pretty cool. Uh, I don't think it'll play like Dark Souls or, you know, Bloodborne. Uh, what it kind of reminds me of almost is Kana Bridge of Spirits. That's what the gameplay sort of looks like to me. Um, which has that Souls sort of style, uh, but a bit more floaty, a bit more, I don't know, cartoony almost. Uh, yeah, um, I I'm into it. Marvel Snap got this really, really awesome uh, trailer, like this amazingly animated 2D animation uh, just to say, hey, we're live on Steam now. And it made me mad. Let me tell you why it made me mad. Because I want a Marvel show to be animated like that and we'll never get it. Instead, we get what if, which I think the animation is so lame on. Give me give me some animated shows like this. This shit looks amazing. Then we got this trailer for this game called Crimson Desert. And let me just tell you right now, this game looks fucking incredible. Like, like too good to be true kind of stuff. It looks incredible. It looks like Ghost of Tsushima meets like Tears of the Kingdom meets like i don't know like like for honor like it, it looks 
amazing like maybe like an, a bit of assassin's creed going on like there's so much oh my god there's like destructible uh buildings uh the combat looks very fluid you're riding a horse around you've got these like cool arrow abilities you're f turning into like an eagle and like flying around this game looks awesome and i can't wait to hear more about it and i can't wait until it releases and it's nothing like it's been presented here <laughs> age of empires 4 is finally coming to xbox so keep an eye out for that and killing Fo killing floor 3 was announced um i think uh the killing floor series is not as big as it used to be I think Killing Floor 1 was huge. Killing Floor 2 wasn't as huge. That being said, I love Killing Floor 2, and I played a ton of Killing Floor 2. And I'm so down for some Killing Floor 3. Uh, totally, totally down to play that. We got a Payday 3 trailer featuring Ice-T. That was sort of interesting and weird, just to see Ice-T at the Game Awards. Like, what you doing here, Ice-T? Super weird, man. And then uh, it ended with uh, an Alan Wake 2 uh, trailer. And this game comes out right before Halloween. And I am so, so, so excited for Alan Wake 3. I cannot wait. Um, I plan on playing that game on stream for Halloween. It should be very fun. Check us out, twitch.tv slash lonercast. I love the first Alan Wake. I love Control, Remedy. They kill it always. So very, very excited for Alan Wake. There was a lot more stuff that was announced at Gamescom. Uh, but eh, I don't know. Not not The rest of it wasn't even really worth mentioning. Speaking of things that aren't really worth mentioning, but I'm going to mention it here. There was a future game showcase at Gamescom as well. These are some more like indie type games smaller games uh it's you know if you're interested there's a few cool things in there um but yeah definitely definitely go check it out if you're interested in that we have one more piece of news here and that is the npd numbers are in for july so let's talk about that here here are the best-selling video games of July 2023. And interestingly, at number one is Remnant 2. How weird is that? I did not think that game was as big as it is, but apparently it's very big. Uh, dropping from number one uh, to number two is Diablo 4. Uh, jumping from number six to number three is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. I don't know why it had such a huge jump, but there you go. Uh, dropping from, hopping up from number five to number four, Hogwarts Legacy. Falling from number two to number five, Final Fantasy 16. Uh, and then dropping in at number six is Pikmin 4. I always have to mention it here that Nintendo does not release digital sales. So this is all physical sales. Uh, so if you included the physical sales, it might have bumped up to like number five or four, but we don't know. There's no way to know that for sure. Um, speaking of Nintendo, at number seven, dropping from number four, is The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. And once again, Nintendo does not include their digital sales. At number eight, dropping from number three, is Street Fighter VI. At number 9, jumping up from number 16, is Elden Ring. Now, I don't know why that jumped up, unless there was some sort of sale, or maybe there were the trailers for Armored Core that maybe reignited some excitement for Elden Ring. I'm not quite sure why that jumped up, but there it is. At number 9 is Elden Ring. And then at number 10, dropping from number 8, is MLB The Show. 23. Now let's jump on over to the top 10 selling video games year to date 2023. So these are the best selling games of 2023 thus far. At number one, now this, I'm just going to say this right here. This is the same exact list from last month. Nothing has moved. So 
uh, just to put that into perspective here. At number one is Hogwarts Legacy. At number two is The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. And one more time, I will just mention that Nintendo does not release their digital sales. So this could be number one if they released their digital sales, but they don't. So at number three is Diablo 4. At number four is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. At number five is Star Wars Jedi Survivor. At number six is Resident Evil 4. At number seven is MLB The Show 23. At number eight is Dead Island 2. At number nine is Final Fantasy 16. And at number 10 is Street Fighter 6. Now the one to look out for is next month because that is the release of Baldur's Gate. And I am curious to see what Baldur's Gate is going to rank on the list. We, I think we all know next month it's going to be at the top. It's going to be the number one slot of that month. I'm wondering where it's going to land top 10 selling video games year to date, especially when we get that PS4 release. So we will see what happens there. Speaking of Baldur's Gate, uh, we did get some news on Baldur's Gate coming to Xbox. We talked about it a couple weeks ago that... Uh, Baldur's Gate was being delayed on Xbox um, because of the Xbox Series S. Uh, we did get a little like press conference, not a conference, but like a, a press release from like Phil Spencer and the creators of Baldur's Gate sort of saying like, hey, it's going to come out. Don't you worry. We're just going to take. Uh, and, and also, it's not the Series S's fault. Definitely not the Series S's fault. But also, the reason it, it was delayed is because of the Series S. <laughs> so, like, it's not the Series S's fault, even though it is completely the Series S's fault. Uh, but that's a whole other conversation that we could have. Uh, leave a comment down below if you think the Series S is holding back <laughs> this generation of consoles. Which I kind of think maybe it is. I don't think... I'm going to add a qualifier on here. I don't think that the Series S is necessarily a bad thing that we have what i do think the bad thing is about the series s is that phil spencer said every game coming to the series x is also coming to the series s that's the problem because it's just at what point is that not going to be true anymore because there's going to come a point where games just can't run on the series s i mean there will always be like smaller games that could come out on the series s but there are there's going to come a point where games are just too beefy not every game but like you know the big big games are too beefy, beefy to come out on the series s so that's all i'm saying with the series s and we're already seeing it happening with baldur's gate so i mean and we're like only halfway into this generation of consoles so are they going to continue to let the series s hold them back or is there going to be a point in the future where phil spencer says all right not every game is coming to the Series S anymore. Sorry. You know, like there's got to be a point where that happens. Anyway, that that was it for the news last week. Not a lot of news, but a couple of big news stories. Um, let's talk about next week in games. Next week in games, we do have Goodbye Volcano High finally coming out for PS5, PS4, and PC on August 29th. If I remember correctly, this game was supposed to come out last year. It's kind of that like indie angsty drama dinosaur thing. Like, oh, there are a bunch of dinosaurs in high school, but also uh, the volcano and the asteroids are about to hit the planet. So they're all going to die or something. I don't know. I'm pretty into that. It seems, it seems cool. Samba de Amigo Party Central is coming to the Switch on August 29th. Sea of Stars is coming to PS5, Xbox Series, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC on August 29th. Under the Waves is coming to PS5, Xbox Series, PS4, Xbox One, and PC on August 29th. Somerville is coming to PS5 and PS4 on August 31st. Trine 5, A Clockwork Conspiracy is coming to everything on August 31st. I greatly appreciate you checking out the show. I hope you guys are enjoying these like shorter episodes that I've been doing. It's kind of hard to keep the conversation going without Nick here. Um, but I want to keep doing it. I like talking about video games. Um, and this is sort of a weekly show. So to only do it when big events happen uh, would be lame. I, I got to do it every week, man. This is last week in games. And if you want some weekly news, 
come here. Come here and check it out. You can subscribe to us on YouTube by going to LonerCast. You can subscribe to us on podcast feeds by looking up last week games, last week in games on any sort of podcast service you use, specifically Spotify. I like those Spotify numbers. And you can also watch us live on twitch.tv slash LonerCast. I also stream a lot over there, so you can come check us out. Uh, I appreciate you being here, and I'll see you next week for Last Week in Games.